Off the top of your head, how many different types of mushrooms do you think you could name? If you're watching this channel, there's a pretty good chance you could name a whole bunch, but for most people, the universe of mushrooms is kind of limited to white mushrooms or brown mushrooms. But the world of mushrooms is so diverse. So in this video, I wanted to focus on the 26 different types of mushrooms that are grown all over the world for both food and medicine. Of course, we should start with the common button mushroom, otherwise known as Agaragus bisporus. This is by far the most popular mushroom in North America, with over 900 million pounds grown every single year in the United States alone. Most people consider portobellos, creminis, and white button mushrooms as different species, but in fact, they're the exact same species, which is Agaragus bisporus. Portobellos are just creminis that are allowed to grow out to full size. And the white button mushroom is just a genetic variant that was actually discovered in 1926. Now, of course, it's cultivated widely. Next up is a close relative to the button mushroom, most commonly referred to as Agaragus blazii. The scientific name is Agaragus superfessens, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's one of those things that you read a lot more than you hear. This one grows in Brazil and parts of China and is used as both a medicinal mushroom and a culinary mushroom, although you're pretty unlikely to actually see it at the grocery store. If you are lucky enough to try it fresh, do not pass it up because this is a really, really good mushroom. Also known as the black poplar mushroom, the piopino or Agrosibi agerita is a relatively easy to cultivate mushroom and it seems to be gaining popularity among small growers. Piopino is very commonly cultivated using bottle farming techniques in Japan and Korea. Although it does grow in the wild, foraging for this mushroom is not really recommended because it will look too close to other potentially poisonous species. Probably one of my favorite Latin names, Auricularia auricula, also known as the wood ear, is a super popular mushroom in Asia where it's added to soups and other dishes. And to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this one. It has a super rubbery texture that's definitely not for everybody. The wood ear gets its name because, well, it looks kind of like an ear and it grows on wood. You can also find this one in the wild, but it is easily cultivated. It's considered both a culinary and a medicinal mushroom. Next up is the milky mushroom, or Colossobi indica. This mushroom is commonly cultivated in India and it really likes the heat. This thing can grow huge, and to be honest, I haven't actually grown this one yet. Even though I have tried, I did kind of get sidetracked, but it's one that I really want to try to grow one day just because it looks so cool. Believe it or not, the milky mushroom wasn't cultivated commercially until 1998, and apparently it wasn't even known to be an edible species until 1972, so it's a relatively newcomer to the mushroom cultivation scene. It's definitely possible to cultivate shaggy mane, or Caprinus comatus, but very few growers actually do. It doesn't last long when it's fresh because of a self-destruct mechanism where it turns into kind of an inky goo. It can be dried, however, which is why you can find it at some grocery stores. When fresh, shaggy ink caps are a delicious gourmet edible that are best added to soups or stews. Now, shaggy mane can be cultivated on manure-based substrates, in bags, or in trays. It can also be grown outdoors in straw beds or on synthetic logs. This mushroom is easy to find in the wild and it's also relatively easy to identify, which is why it's a super popular mushroom among mushroom hunters and foragers. Next up is Cordyceps militaris. And if you're interested, we did a whole video on Cordyceps militaris cultivation, which I'll link to up here somewhere. In short, Cordyceps militaris is a medicinal mushroom that grows on rice and other grain-based substrates. Cordyceps militaris does require very specific growing conditions when trying to be cultivated commercially. Believe it or not, Enoki or Flamulina volutipes is one of the most commonly grown mushrooms in the world. It is most often grown with intentionally elongated stems and tiny little caps. This is done by limiting the levels of fresh air and light that the mushroom fruiting bodies receive while they're growing. Wild enoki, which is now actually considered a completely separate species, looks totally different. So you're better off looking for this one in the grocery store than in the forest. Next up is reishi, also known as Ganoderma lucidum, which is arguably one of the most beautiful mushrooms in the world. It starts off growing with these tiny finger-like projections that eventually transform into a large shiny red conch. 
Reishi is not a good choice for the kitchen for two reasons. Number one, it's super bitter, and number two, the texture is extremely woody. However, reishi has powerful medicinal properties, which is why it's a prime candidate for cultivation all over the world. Reishi is typically grown on hardwood sawdust in bags or on logs that are buried underground and grown in greenhouses or shade houses. Reishi grows really slow compared to other mushrooms and it really does prefer warmer climates. If you're ever lucky enough to find Grifola frondosa or maitake in the woods, you should feel free to do your happy dance. That's what the ancient Japanese did when they stumbled upon this mushroom in the woods, which is why it's also called the dancing mushroom in Japan. Luckily, maitake is widely cultivated and can be grown in bottles or in bags. But it's not the easiest species to grow and it requires pretty specialized techniques. Maitake is one of those species that has both culinary properties and medicinal properties. Also, maitake has the rare distinction as being known as a soft polypore, meaning it has pores instead of gills, but the fruiting body is actually soft and tender, unlike most other polypores like reishi or turkey tail. That's one of the reasons why maitake is such a good gourmet culinary mushroom. Now, it's hard to pick my favorite mushroom, but if I had to choose, I would likely pick lion's mane, also known as Heresia myrinaceus. Lion's mane has exploded in popularity recently and is another one of those mushrooms that has both medicinal and culinary properties. Most people who use lion's mane as a supplement use it for its brain boosting effects. Now, lion's mane is easy to grow and it has amazing potential in the kitchen. Instead of using gills or pores like a lot of other mushrooms, Lion's mane disperses its spores using these elongated teeth. You can also find lion's mane in the wild. It does have some close cousins that are look-alikes, but they're all considered edible. Next up is shimiji, which is a really fun mushroom to say out loud. You can easily find this one at the grocery store. They have excellent shelf life, which is why they can easily be shipped overseas. Shimiji are a perfect candidate for bottle farming techniques which is the common way that this species is cultivated. Just like button mushrooms, shimiji comes in both white and brown varieties. Believe it or not, cultivation methods for shiitake were first discovered over 800 years ago. Shiitake is still widely cultivated all over the world today and is responsible for almost 25% of all mushroom cultivation worldwide. Traditionally, shiitake was cultivated on logs outdoors using the soak and strike method, but many commercial operations today use the much more efficient fruiting block method where the shiitake is grown on these fruiting blocks in bags. Shiitake mushroom can make an awesome meat substitute and if you're interested, I'll link to a recipe up here where we made uh, barbecue pulled pork with shiitake mushrooms and it's really, really good. And if you're interested in using shiitake mushrooms, you should definitely check it out. Next up is a super popular, typically wild harvested mushroom, the morel. The morel, known as Morcella esculenta, is an unbelievably tasty mushroom and foragers all over the world will head out into the woods every single spring to go and find this mushroom when it fruits. And people are willing to spend big money on morels. In fact, there's an entire economy around harvesting these wild mushrooms every single year. Because they fetch such high prices, people have been trying to cultivate morels for decades with almost zero commercial success. Recently though, there have been breakthroughs in the cultivation of this once elusive species, and it looks like it's starting to be cultivated at scale. Although I've never personally seen one of these farms myself, I have talked to somebody who's been to one, and it really does sound amazing the way that they're growing morels on a huge scale. Next up is one of the coolest looking cultivated mushrooms around, the chestnut mushroom, or Foliota adiposa. It has a really rough cap and grows in these beautiful symmetric clusters. Although not very common as of yet, commercial cultivation of this mushroom is definitely growing in popularity. So be sure to look out for it, especially at your local farmer's market. Another Foliota is Foliota nemeco, more commonly referred to as just nemeco. Nemeco grows in small clusters of these little orange-brown mushrooms with a really slimy cap. Now many people when they see these in the grocery store will assume that they've gone bad because of the slimy cap, but that's completely natural. Nemeco make a great addition to soups and the gelatinous coating on the cap can actually be used as a thickener. Like lots of other gourmet mushrooms, Nemeco grows on wood and is commonly grown using a bottle farming technique. The pink oyster is certainly a head turner because it has these vibrant pink colors throughout the whole mushroom. 
Pink oysters can be used in cooking like all other oysters, but unfortunately they do use most of their colors when they're heated. Also, cultivated pink oyster have a really short shelf life. A few days after harvest, they start to get a bit of a foul smell, so they're not the best to leave for a long time, but if you can find them fresh, they're definitely awesome. Now here's another one of my favorite gourmet mushrooms, the king oyster, otherwise known as Pleurotus eryngii. King oysters don't have that typical shelf-like formation like your other common oyster mushrooms. Instead of growing in large folded clusters with flat caps, king oysters usually grow singly and can have thick fat stems. They are commonly grown in high CO2, low light environments which give them those huge stems and really tiny caps. Unlike most other oysters, king oysters actually have an awesome shelf life, so they can even last up to two weeks under proper refrigeration, which is why they're pretty common to see at the grocery store and can easily be shipped overseas. Now here's yet another oyster that you might not have heard of, the white elf cap, or Pleurotus nebrodensis. This species is very similar to the king oyster and can be grown and cooked in much the same way. Still, cultivation of this mushroom is not common and very few producers are growing this thing commercially. Of course, we gotta mention the typical oyster mushroom or Pleurotus ostriatus. It grows naturally all over the world on stumps and fallen logs. It's also widely cultivated and is one of the most commonly grown mushrooms in the whole world. These oysters can be grown on a bewildering number of substrates, including straw, hardwood, banana leaves and paper, cardboard boxes, and pretty much any other plant-based material. Like most other oysters, they have a relatively short shelf life, so it's best if you can get them fresh, especially at the farmer's market. Yet another oyster is the yellow oyster, also known as Pleurotus citrinopiliatus. It's a real head turner because it produces these beautiful bouquets of yellow mushrooms. Yellow oysters are easy to grow and are typically cultivated in bottle farming techniques or on hardwood sawdust blocks. There is one downside though, these delicate mushrooms have a super short shelf life, so again, you're pretty unlikely to see them at most grocery stores. Moving on from oysters, next up is the wine cap, also known as King Strafaria or Strafaria rugoso annulata. This is one of the easiest mushrooms to grow at home in garden beds. By simply spreading myceliated sawdust onto a pile of wood chips and leaving it sit over the summer, there's a really good chance that you can find fresh wine cap mushrooms in your backyard in the fall. Next up is turkey tail, which is one of the most commonly found mushrooms in the forest. It grows on fallen trees and stumps all over the world, and if you spend any time in the forest, there's a really good chance that you've seen turkey tail. Turkey tail is considered a medicinal mushroom, and people will often consume extracts or teas made from turkey tail. Turkey tail is easily cultivated on wood-based substrate, but it often makes more economic sense for commercial operations to actually wild harvest this species rather than cultivate it. Another weird looking mushroom is the Tremella mushroom or the jelly fungus. The scientific name for this one is Tremella fusiformis. This mushroom is amazing to look at and it actually has a unique method of cultivation. In order to produce fruits, Tremella needs to parasitize another species. It starts off as just a slime mold, but once it encounters another species of fungus, it starts aggressive mycelial growth and eventually is able to fruit. Cultivators need to grow two species in conjunction, both the parasite and the tremella mushroom, in order to fruit it. Although it's essentially flavorless, it has a really interesting texture and is super popular in Asian cooking. It's also found in a lot of beverages. Tremella is also considered a medicinal mushroom and is thought to have anti-aging effects for the skin. Now last but not least is the patty straw mushroom, also known as Volvariella vulvaceae. Like the name implies, this mushroom is cultivated on patty straw or rice straw and is perfectly suited for warmer climates. This mushroom is a really good candidate for low-tech cultivation methods because growing this outside in warmer climates is actually pretty easy to do. A not so fun fact, young patty straw mushroom fruit bodies look similar to the button form of Amanita phylloides, otherwise known as the death cap mushroom. This misidentification is responsible for a number of deaths every year. So no matter what you do, I uh, don't think you're gonna go find this one in the wild. So that's it, a quick overview of some of the most popular gourmet and medicinal mushrooms cultivated all over the world. Hopefully you learned something new and if I missed anything or if I mispronounced some of the Latin names, which is very likely, uh, feel free to mention it in the comments below. Also, if you liked the video, feel free to hit that like button. That really helps the channel. And if you're new to the channel and wanna learn more about mushrooms, feel free to subscribe. We put out videos like this all the time, sharing the magic of mushrooms.